It's personal defence and resource. They decided on the right dogs that could possibly be jealous and they put them in a brain scanner. Is it normal for a dog to freak out no, just because normal. a baby's come into the no, house? No, it's something's not right there. The dog is absolutely noticing everything that you do. Hi, I'm Dr. Sab Cohen-Hatton and I'm a neuroscientist specialising in animal and human learning mechanisms. I'm Jamie Penrith, I specialise in canine predatory behaviour and I'm also a former police dog handler. I'm Danny Wells and I'm a dog trainer specialising in unwanted behaviour. Every week we sit down to talk about the latest research in canine psychology. And more importantly, how you can apply it to your own dog to get to know them even better. Welcome to The Dog Scholar. I've got a question. Go on. Ah, what is the question? I'm glad you've got, got a question. Don't come at me with questions, Sam. Come at me with answers. Yeah. Well, I, I thought I was like... sitting there for the hell of it, so it's <laughs> yeah. a good job you've got a question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this boiling hot <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. set, I'd be a pretty rubbish scientist if I didn't come forward with questions. But also, I hope some answers or certainly some points to discuss. Now, okay. can dogs feel jealous? What do you think? Can dogs feel jealous? <laughs> what do you think, Danny? <laughs> Did you just say no? Oh. <laughs> no End of story. No, right, next. come on. Moving on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Case closed. Yeah, That's nah. your takeaway. I know yeah. that there's certainly uh, loads and loads and loads of dog owners that would say, yeah, yeah 100% well. they can. Absolutely they can. Owners can feel jealous. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really, yeah, definitely so. <laughs> I, um, I really do think out of all the subjects we're covering, this is the one that is most likely to look like they are feeling mm. a certain human emotion compared to all the others. I think this is the one where, you know, it's it's like a, a, a fine line, like when you're, when you're visually observing your dog. There are a lot of situations where you could go, eh, he's jealous, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, <laughs> my mum and dad say it all the time, and every time they do, I go, I look, I look at them and I just let it go now. But I think um, there's a lot of behaviors that dogs portray that can be perceived as jealousy, and this is the one where I'm really understanding that people can misinterpreted. Well, of course, dogs are really sensitive, not only to the actions yeah. of other dogs, but to the actions of humans as well, and the interactions between them. So let's not forget that. It's yeah. not just how dogs respond to other dogs, but it's how dogs respond to humans as well. You know, that kind of cross-species interaction, which is incredible. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of the questions that is going to have the most people if we say, like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, mine does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, I can, and I can completely understand that you that you you think that your dog's jealous, but you know you you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they wrong? Why right. Well, let's wrong? turn what to the we science. Let's turn to the science and see what the studies says. Studies in general have seen elevated aggression from dogs who are in social situations that involve their human interacting with another dog or another person. Now, it could be that they're defending access to their caregiver, or it could be that they're guarding them as a resource because they think that they own them. So that's a, a new view on ownership, isn't it? Yeah. It's not that I own you, owner. the dog owns the owner. Yeah. In 99.9% .9 of the cases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But of course it could be jealousy. And we know that in humans, jealousy, again, is a really complex emotion and it involves things like anger and sadness. And we've seen activation in parts of the brain that are linked with those emotional systems, like there's a part of the brain called the amygdala, which is linked with fear responses, and the hypothalamus, which is involved in anger. So if you see something terrifying, you immediately feel fear. The amygdala is stimulating the hypothalamus, which sends a message to the adrenal glands to produce hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, and that's how you get fight or flight. Just, you know, you're saying about the different parts of the brain. So the yeah. brain tells the brain that tells the brain that tells the body to release. Yeah, exactly that, exactly right, okay. that. So the amygdala, the fear bit goes blah, 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 blah. That's right. exactly what it does, it makes that noise. Yeah, and then it can hear that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was a rubbish explanation. So the amygdala is the bit that kind of registers fear. It's your fear alarm, right? right? That's sending a signal then to the hypothalamus, which is another part of your brain, which is then sending its little messages along to these glands that have produced various hormones, like adrenaline and cortisol. Those are the ones that are acting on your, your nervous system to either stimulate you to fight whatever the threat is or 
flight. So they're like things that trigger you to act. Yeah, right, exactly, okay. exactly that. They're kind of, it's your brain registering a threat and preparing your body to respond to that, okay. essentially, right? So those bits are triggered when you're feeling jealousy. Now, another part of the brain that's been involved in human jealousy is a part called the insula. And now that's involved in processing emotions, as well as another part of the brain called the temporal sulcus. Now, the temporal sulcus, as well as just being a brilliantly named part of the brain, is basically a hub that you have. It's like this nexus where things like how you understand and process different social interactions happen. It's the kind of part of the brain that's kind of taking all of these responses and registering all these things that help you to kind of understand how someone else might be feeling. So all of those parts of your brain are in play as a human when you're feeling jealousy. So you can see how it's quite complex. And we know that dogs have got a, a different neural architecture to us. So it's not necessarily going to be the same thing. Now, I found a study for this episode that looked at the example of dogs and how they were reacting to their owners when the owner was interacting with another dog. They wanted to make sure that they were measuring the right thing. So they used a kind of doggy personality questionnaire to make sure they had the right dogs in the study, first and foremost. And to be clear, the scientist filled out the questionnaire, not the dogs. That would be really clever dogs, wouldn't it? Yeah, how do you even hold a pen? That would be a far a better study, wouldn't it? <laughs> in fact, maybe that's probably, the next study. Probably be less biased. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you cynic. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, they got the dogs, they decided on the right dogs that were, could possibly be jealous, and they put them in a brain scanner. And now while the dogs were in this brain scanner, they put them in the view of a fake dog, and this fake dog had been rubbed with the scent of an unfamiliar dog. So for all intents and purposes to the dogs in the scanner, they thought they were looking at another dog. And it put their owners there, and these dogs in the scanner had to watch their owners either feed the fake dog or... It had to watch the owner putting food directly in a bucket or the dog in the scanner got a bit of food itself. So those were the three conditions. Now, bear in mind the dogs were being fed. So they were looking at the food, the food that they were kind of enjoying and wanting, going to another dog or into a bucket. And both of those things, whether it was going to another dog or into the bucket, signal the loss of a reward of something that it wants. So, you know, I want that like and the, I'm not yeah, getting it in both of those conditions. And that meant that you could look at whether parts of the brain like the amygdala was lighting up just because it's cross, it's not getting a treat. Because if that was true, you'd see brain activation in the parts for, for both of those uh, conditions. Now, what they found was the dogs had more amygdala activation while they were watching their human give food to the dog than when it was put in a bucket. Okay, so it wasn't just, there's something there that I want that I'm not getting because it would have lit up with both the bucket and the dog but it didn't. Now, the amygdala itself has been linked to a range of negative emotions. So things like fear and anxiety and anger and also jealousy in humans, as we know. When you see the amygdala lighting up, it's a bit like a brain indicator of high arousal. And depending on the context, that kind of over aggressive behavior might follow that arousal in a similar way to human jealousy. But those dogs, even though they were aggressive dogs, even though you could see the amygdala activating, they weren't leaving the scanner, so they weren't reacting. They weren't doing anything. They were staying there, feeling something, but not acting on it. And that means that the dogs could be feeling something well before we see them acting on it. So it could be that when they're in the presence of a trigger, they might be feeling pretty triggered, and some dogs that have got less control over their behaviour might be acting on that. could be that the, the practical behaviour of down and stay is more, is more instilled yeah. Than what they're feeling towards yeah. anything. Yeah, it could be. It could be. So the thing that they were told to do, like down, stay when they're in the scanner, was stronger and p provided a kind of uh, impulse control, yeah. an inhibitory control on their desire to go yeah. and react to that dog. But I would say there is different forms of jealousy. So there is resource jealousy, i.e. this betters my situation. I need to achieve this to to you know benefit in some way whether it be food whether it be relationship status knowing mm. that if i if i get to this person then i have access to the couch or yeah, to reward, yeah. or things like that and i think that dogs are probably capable of that they can see they can make the association of you're by this person who feeds walks us everything this is my access to resource and i can be competitive towards this mm -hmm. however I think when you talk to the public about jealousy, they're looking at a different form of jealousy. And if you were to give a comparison, it would be 
Is, is my who's my wife talking to there? Oh, he's a bit, bit bit more ripped than me. He looks like he's got more money than me. That's more of a of of a jealousy that I think the public are kind of pushing towards their dogs, like it's a um, like it's an, an emotional an emotional attachment linked to insecurity. Almost. Yeah, linked to yeah. An, an almost insecurity way if you explain it like that. In that sort of standpoint, you know, you're by my mum. You, you know, yeah. that's my that's my mum. That's more of a kind of relationship side of jealousy. Yeah. So do you get where I'm going with it? I do totally. And of course, we're assuming that the dogs are annoyed that they're humans giving food to another dog. It could just be reward inequity. Yeah. And dogs, like other species, have been found to be sensitive to another animal getting a reward when they're not. Yeah. It's competition. Uh, competition, it's access to resources. Like yeah. said. Do you know what? I'd love to see this study repeated with an owner and a Look, stranger yeah, yeah. feeding a dog I, oh, to see if yeah. the same thing happens. Every study we, we come across here, there's always something where you think, why, oh, why haven't you done that bit? Know, why have you done that? Look at like um, lurchers racing or greyhounds racing. You know, that competitiveness, they're all they're all not jealous over who's getting it. They're in competition, who's yeah, who's yeah. going to yeah. get it? Yeah. And you could perceive that as jealousy. Oh, they're all, they all want that fish. It's a bit, you know, a bit jealous, but it's yeah. a, it's more of a competitive kind yeah. of, you know, task. Would yeah. you say? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, when when you're running a race and you lose out, you don't turn around and go, ah. Oh. You don't I'm lose so out. Jealous. There is no losing out. No, it's not. Not, no, 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 no. You're just yet to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Quite, yeah. Yeah. quite. Yeah. Good, good. We should turn this into a motivational podcast. It doesn't exist nowadays because you get sort of a participate in it. Well, you do. You get a little sticker. It's not a race. It's not a race. What do you prefer, stickers or roses? I never used to get anything in school. I used to sometimes come second and lose me. How many were in the race? Oh, there was fucking loads. One. Of them. Yeah, I was a bit athletic. <laughs> me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember one specific sports race. I was flying. I was like first. I was like everything went in slow motion. I was like, oh my god, I am the king. And then this girl called Janine Connor went Oof, like the flash past me. <gasps> Couldn't believe it. Whatever you are, Janine, I hold a grudge. Rather than me jumping and saying the amygdala is lighting up because of jealousy, you know, or, or if that's associated with jealousy, where you were talking about areas of the brain that are lighting up associated with lack of perceived reward. So I thought I was going to get the food. I didn't get the food. Yeah. I see food being presented towards another dog. Mm. I anticipate getting the food. I didn't get the food. Yeah. That dog did get the food. Could that be what's yeah. responsible yeah. for triggering what, what's being shown inside the brain yeah. as much as yeah. and jealousy? I, and I would say um, hunger plays a vital part in that. Again, most dogs are on one, maybe two meals a day. They're always in a state of hunger. So that is going to spark that that mm. that interest, isn't it? That 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 need to to eat, to consume. Yeah. The response that we were seeing from the amygdala was reducing the more times the dog saw the food being given away. So exposing a dog to something that triggers it in a super controlled way could actually be an effective way to reduce aggression in a similar way, I suppose, to exposure therapy in humans. Yeah. But the other thing that would be happening is the dog would be having more treats itself because that was part of the experiment. Yeah, yeah. So actually, it might be then the dog is full so it's not that hungry yeah. anymore, so it's not that bothered. It's difficult, isn't it, to be able to extrapolate whether this is jealousy or something mm. else. There's probably a very, very rudimentary dog version of it within this, but yeah. either way, what I'd say is your dog is absolutely noticing everything that you do, yeah. and it means something to them, even if it's only at a very basic associative level. So it's important to be aware of the impact that you're having on your dog, because it's probably bigger than you think. Conflict between dogs is usually of a competitive nature and it's usually over like a, like a resource, whether that be space, a toy, yeah. food, things like that. So yeah. if you are favoring one dog in your household subconsciously, there's every chance that the other dog can become a little bit more combative towards that dog yeah. in order to you know, seek victory for, for resource. Yeah, and I've got to be honest, I'm terrible for favorite. I mean, I love all of my dogs, but mm. I'm really close to Luther. You do really bond with a dog sometimes, don't you? Especially yeah. in a multi-dog household. My husband and my child thinks that I like my dog more than anyone else, including humans. In I think life. everyone who knows you thinks the same, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not that obsessive, am I? You are a bit, yeah. Am I? Oh, yeah. Is it really bad? Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. don't care, I'm gonna it's own good. it, it's Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Just own it, just own it, innit, yeah? Own it. When you say about a multi-dog household, if I were to, um, I don't know, feed one, um, and another one were to come over and try and get the food, or barge yeah. in and try and get the food, or, or uh, leave one out, just yeah. feed, feed five and leave the sixth one out and then feed the five again and perhaps the sixth one would push its way in. Is it jealousy? Oh, you know, if, if, you were to, if you looked at a bird's nest uh, and there's like four chicks in it and, what, and one chick is being fed and another one keeps pushing in to try and get the, you know, get the worm or get the grub over the top of the others, is it, is it jealous, the yeah, little chick, or is it just a bird that... Right, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, and I think that's... Help. You I think know, it's a very primitive feeling towards yeah. survival, yeah. Yeah, but really, really easy for us 
living with that animal to be Absolutely. able to say, this is how I see it. Absolutely. And, to... and, and adding to that, yeah, you know, I don't really experience this other than with one dog that I had to work through who's a very assertive dog. We've spoke about him before, Logan. He started a, a couple of years ago now. He started having a go at Flint, my Labrador, but Flint can't switch off from retrieving. So if we're out, uh-huh. he'll rummage around the bushes and pick a can, an empty can up or a bottle and bring it to me. And Logan would boom, have him for it. And because um, he wants the cat. Yeah, yeah, but other than that, because well, ne- he's jealous of jealous. No, in yeah, yeah, but, of but I think it's more the interaction. It's yeah. it's interaction with me, and I provide the resources. I control, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the, you know, yeah. all the all the outcomes. So you're the fun dispenser. Yeah, yeah. Other than that, that's I think that's a case of I'd say that's a case of genetics. He's a very very assertive dog. I think when you've got a little bit of let's say canine chaos in the house, <laughs> that's when you're more likely to fall victim to this. Where if you are you know favouring one dog or one dog has something the other dog can start getting a bit naughty and start trying to compete for resource and we will perceive that as jealousy. Yeah. I, you can't really do it on the move, can you? But if you were to put two greyhounds racing after that after that, that hair moving, would the same parts of the brain flag up as from that experiment? It's the same sort of competition, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. see, I, I took a, a photograph the other night and put it on per, personal social media. And well, it was, we, should we talk about this now, Jen? It, it was with, uh, yeah. I think I, I saw was, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, come on. No. Anyway, um, so I, I had three dogs, th- three of my dogs out in the, in the garden and one toy. And it's uh, like a retrieve article, you know, that, that's easy for them to pick up and carry. And all three, as it was thrown, all three ran away, all three dived on it, and all three are running around like they're, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll put caption like three musketeers sort of thing. Um, but yeah, seen that uh, where the two take it and then the third takes it, or where the one takes it and then the other two come in and take hold of it, is it jealousy? Are they taking it because they're jealous of the fact that the one's got it? Are they taking it because it's a resource that they want to protect? Because I take yeah. it from them. It's so conditioned it's to bring that, them value. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. again, yeah. you know, I mean, jealousy is a really complex emotion yeah. and your dog isn't your human partner or your child. Yeah, yeah. Dogs can be experiencing something negative, a negative emotion yeah. as a result of those interactions. Whether it's jealousy as yeah. we experience it, I don't know. I just describe it as a very rudimentary I, I, I think it's, it's just a descriptive word yeah. for look what's happening. For an example, if Flint, my Labrador, comes over and then me bully comes over and I'm stroking him, me bully will come in and like nudge him out the way and get it. Yeah, yeah. Now, someone will go, that's jealous. But I just know he gets really like good value from me into it, you know, messing with him, stroking his head, this kind yeah. of thing. Good he sees it and he vibes. wants it. It's as sim- yeah. simple as he's not going... You're getting a stroke from my dad. Yeah, why aren't he's I getting not it? Doing That's that. a brilliant idea. At the same idea. time, Let's at the same time yeah. I think dog trainers over this particular subject can be a little bit anal about it. You can be like, it's not, it's not jealousy. But I, I'll tell you now, the amount of times that's happened and I've gone, come here, you jealous ass. Do you, do you know what I mean? <laughs> the dog's condition, that that brings them value. I like that sort of interaction. He sees it. That's a visual cue for, oh, I want a piece of that. Get out of my way. I'll I'll get my I'll get my dopamine yeah. it or you know however, yeah. you, however you want to go about it, but I'll still in my head or sometimes I'll go. He's a jealous bastard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like. and I don't think there's any harm in no. that. So what I was going to say is like you know this sort of like uh, dog scholar podcast set. If you could hear the echoes of the amount of times that we've talked about bringing it back to seeing the dog as the dog and yeah. not yeah. projecting human you know qualities onto them that could be detrimental. And I think if we're going to say do you know what? Oh, they're happy. You know they're happy like I would be yeah. happy. In that. No problem. What bad can come of happiness? Yeah. When we start saying they're jealous, yeah. you know, and we start and we start attributing these sort of more, uh, you know, complex a, a little bit, yeah, complex yeah. and potentially sinister yeah. sort of, uh, you know, vendetta-driven yeah, emotions. Yeah, they can they can they can start planning and right. scheming. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I think with it's needless. I don't think it's beneficial for us to necessarily put that on that and genuinely believe it. Like you no. say, to say you're a jealous bugger. Come on, out you go. Yeah. You know, you're always jumping in. You jealous little son. That's that's one thing. I think actually believing it and acting upon it is something different. Yeah, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. This is such a great study, isn't it? And we've got more for you coming up after the break. Welcome back. This is such an interesting topic. It really is. I've had, you know, a lot of clients coming to me with behaviours that we've been talking about. And well, the pretty, clients have got the behaviours. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bringing <laughs> the dogs really with them related really to behaviours. Yeah. And, you know, in this past, trainers, past trainers are putting together a training programme based around the dog being jealous. Yeah. And Really? It, oh, yeah. A lot, a lot. I think a lot of trainers, yeah. you know, 
put in the comments if you're if you're a trainer and you're experiencing the same thing. But or if you're an owner, an who's overwhelming had a trainer amount of trainers yeah. are saying dogs are jealous. Wow. They they, re they really are. They, because they, they see it and they the perceive science? it in their own way. Have the hell no, you haven't. <laughs> But it's something that your own personal, you know, that person's personal interpretation of what they see. You know, you're a victim of your own reinforcement history yeah. yourself, aren't you? Of if course, that's what I yeah. see, and so I act yeah, on it, yeah. and that's what it's I natural. see, and so I act, yeah, yeah, it's the way yeah. it is with, with a lot of And, people. you know, we've, we've touched on resource garden, but, you know, resource garden is a subcategory of, of defence, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's personal defence and resource. Yeah. So, it, you know, that's... Explain that's, resource garden. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, resource garden is raising levels of aggression to hold a valuable resource, something that the dog finds value in. So, like, a dog having a toy and growling if you try and take the toy off. Yeah, it. or, or a, a bone, bone, a bone, or a piece of kibble on the floor. Tissue. Some dogs, some dogs will get, do space creating behaviour. They'll growl, they'll grumble, they'll lift their lips, they'll snarl, I do they'll space still, creating they'll behaviour on snap. the dance floor. Do you? Yeah, I do. Just I, windmill. Just basically yeah. windmill. Just snarl and lift your lips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that not look normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Imagine. What dance floors do you go to? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> That's why it creates the space because yeah. they're like, what is she doing? <laughs> I don't need, I don't need anything purposeful to create space in the dance. Well, someone see some old fella get on it and you'll just think, yeah. we're not I'm off. Yeah. 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 I'm off. Yeah. Quite I should teach quite that. Maybe we, should... <laughs> Maybe we should teach that to dogs as an alternative space-creating yeah. behaviour. Yeah. Dad dancing. Especially Absolutely. when I pull up the heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, the resource garden is already categorised as a part of... Um, of defense yeah. in, in, a, in a dog. The behavior is to create space around something the dog's found valuable. Yeah. And that can transfer over into anything, including affection. You know, if the dog finds it rewarding to, to be, you know, have his head tickled, then they're gonna they're gonna want that as a resource. They're, they're gonna see something. It'll trigger that 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 behavioural loop as we've talked about. Oh, that that's a feel good fact there. I see it. I want it. Yeah, yeah. Much like much yeah. like a very small child. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it is, isn't yeah. it? It's like dopamine hit after dopamine hit. Yeah, and they yeah. get it, and they see it happening, and then they're anticipating a dopamine hit, and then they go and they do it. Okay, they, they, you know, they push for it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it just comes back again, yeah. doesn't it, to what we talk yeah. about every time that we talk about things, the importance yeah. of understanding, yeah. you know, as an owner, that somebody's dog, what it does, yeah. you know, if it continues to do it, yeah. then on some level it's getting some fo uh, yeah. form of satisfaction from it. And that doesn't necessarily need to be what we'd classify as being a good thing, a good behaviour. But from the dog's perspective, there is value to be had in what they're doing. But, I mean, there are things that are really practical about this. We've talked about some of the behavioural fallout from what we're seeing as jealousy in mm. dogs. But practically, what can people do? Practically? Mm. Stop, the... stop kidding yourselves. I was going to say, <laughs> I was gonna say <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to say, uh, uh, genuinely, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. the first practical step that you can take is to, to realise that, yeah, realise that it isn't necessarily yeah. what you think it's yeah. going to be, you know, realise yeah. that it, it could be yeah. a far more dilute form yeah. of that, it could, you know, and also, you, you can do things about it, yeah. you know, I'll give it to you, what would you do about it? Well, again, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have any of my dogs demand anything, you know, they might get away with it once in a while if I'm feeling like, I, I find it funny or what you like, but if I <laughs> I see that as a pattern of behaviour, I'll stop it. If I'm stroking Flint and Ralph comes over, I go, go on, go away. I'll carry on stroking mm. Flint. You will not get access by bullying Flint out the way. And so you're not reinforcing the behaviour? Yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not letting them get any success from it yet. Yeah. How many people, if they were sat there and watching you do that, would go, oh, he only wanted to get... Exactly, yeah, that's yeah. not fair. Come well, here, and I'll yeah. give it to you. He only thinking wanted of the bigger picture, right. and now, you, now he's just gone, well, it never worked there, but this happens if I do this, yeah. so I'll repeat it again. Yeah. And you just don't know how the following repetition is going to pan out. We've fastly entered the society where... People are literally saying it's wrong to say no to your dog. And no, it's not only is it not wrong, it's essential that your dog understands no. Could you imagine never saying no to your child? Uh, oh yeah. my God, mine's bad enough now and I do yeah. say no. <laughs> and, now, you and now you're bringing that attitude to an apex predator yeah. that, that, that doesn't think in the same way that we do. Nor does any other social species on the planet. On the planet. Yeah. 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 And, and I think that's something, you know, we've got to be... Yeah. There's nothing wrong in saying you can't do that. Because no, you, you know? have to learn what you can't do right. as well as what you can right. do. I think... But, uh, yeah, sorry, James. I was just going to say, but there would be an argument that in, in order for an animal, a dog, to be able to adjust its behaviour to better best suit yeah. a, a, a safe and, and responsible life, you yeah. know, going forward, not just for me, not just for the dog, not just for you, but for anybody and everybody else that they interact with and the other dogs in the household and things like that, that they have to be able to navigate that yeah. course. And they, that navigation isn't done by one means. There are multiple different ways that a, a, enable them to make the right decisions. Yeah. And on one hand, we're saying that dogs require the autonomy or deserve the autonomy 
autonomy to be able to make decisions. And on the other hand, we're saying we're not going to uh, provide them with the necessary experiences in order to yeah. do that. I mean, I would always say to people, experiences drive expectations and expectations drive behaviors. And if I want to see certain behaviors yeah. or I want to see a reduction in certain behaviors, experiences need to, be, I can't tell you, I can't say, sweetheart, you can't do this. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm really, really so sorry, but you can't do it. Yeah, we, we, it's not yeah. something that we can sit down and yeah. explain. I think so it true. also, going back to genetics as well, understand that the dogs that you've got, I will never on God's green earth throw a ball for my two Malinois because I know no dog trainer on the planet is going to stop Logan from being consumed by that drive, that level of drive yeah. and competitive nature. He's really and if high it's, drive, and if the he? pair of them get to the ball at the same time, right. he'll he'll do what he did. Right. He will. Now, if you're a dog trainer sat at home, which there's going to be many after watching this and saying, "I can do this with any dog," I'm going to put it to you that you're full of baloney because gen genetics matter yeah. and understand, and that can be as simple as you know maybe you've got a retrieve and breed that is an absolute food gannet. And now you, you reward another dog. They can wade straight in. They might not necessarily be going for that dog, but now that dog feels the need to defend itself. Now you've got a visual trigger from your other dog. Every time your dog comes over, they, they're going at each other. Yeah. It's important to understand the genetics that you're working with. If you've got a dog that if you get a ball out, they, they're pie-eyed and chottering at the teeth, yeah. you're probably best not throwing a ball, a single ball for multiple, multiple dogs with dogs. that particular yeah. dog. So you're you managing and that's not to say every dog yeah. can't do that. There's many, yeah. many high-drive dogs that can have that sort of you know mutual competition with another dog I understand that I've got one that can't and you're never going to fix it you know you could excessively punish it which I would not recommend but even if you did that you might get one or two good interactions but you're always waiting for that one where it where it where it yeah. unfolds it's I not worth like, it. like you said there so you've said you know it is essentially managing the behavior I'm exactly yeah. the same literally yeah. two days ago when I was out with two of mine and I'm throwing a toy for them and I after the first throw of the toy my error my error on throwing a toy with the two of them because they hadn't been blasted yet. Yeah. So yeah. they set off literally like, like, like dogs from the trap. Yeah, bang, out they went for it. And both came into this toy at the same time. Both went throwing over the ground, rolling Aww. over the ground or whatever. They shared it on the way back. Yeah. But that, those sort of things can result in impact uh, injuries, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Which the dog, they're in such a state, they're not, they don't sit there and think, oh my God, look what you just did to my lip. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, you, you drive takes them through it. Yeah, you, don't yeah. even, you won't even know until the next day in some yeah, cases. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so again, which we can almost accept that, you know, that they're yeah. capable of that, um, but, but yet we would still label them with or, or burden them with the, um, the ability or, or the, you know, the misfortune of carrying an understanding of concepts such as jealousy in yeah. the way that we understand it. But yeah, management, you will not change the individual temperament of a dog. Never. Yeah. You cannot. We've talked before, haven't we, about the predatory sequence yeah. and the way that that, as a genetic, as a... Jamie, just want to explain that for the people at home, the predatory sequence. Yeah, the, the predatory... <laughs> don't you know want looking over... Oh, no, no, this, this, this is you. This is, this is you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just for the people at home. So the predatory sequence is essentially a sequence sequence of behaviours, a set of behaviours that enable a dog as a predator, as, as a dog that is a hunter after a prey animal, to be able to secure that, to be able to catch it. Okay, so you'll have a dog that goes out that looks for the prey animal, that stalks the prey animal, yeah. chases Chase the dog, prey animal, stay, grabs chase, hold catch, of it, kill. kills, dissects, eats, yeah. you know, and we've bred various breeds to be able to, what you call, truncate that sequence, stop that oh, sequence that some way, way a lot. Do you want, okay. you want me to use it again? Yeah, do Truncate. Ooh. <laughs> Truncate the sequence. <laughs> what is it about truncate that you particularly love? No, it's just an unusual, an unusual word, and it's very, um, I say it it's an articulate word. Yeah. 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 Nice, nice use of words. Thanks, yeah, yeah. thanks. Impressed with your lexicon. Uh, thank you. Come on, thank hit you. us with some more. Uh, to, be, to, be, to, be, to be able to basically break that sequence, right? So we, we've, yeah. we've bred dogs for, so herding dogs, we don't want them dissecting yeah, yeah. Uh, prey. We don't want them eating yeah. it because we, we want, want them to actually move it. We want them truncating the cycle. We want them truncating the cycle, yeah. We want to... And look, yeah, well, look at look at the Belgian Malinois. It was originally a herding dog, yeah. but the genetics were just too prominent that they yeah. moved it over towards man work for for bite work for police dogs yeah. for military dogs because it was just too, it was just too involved in the catch and the, the the catch and the kill. So when you t when you take your dog out, you know somebody's walking their dog out in yeah. the park. They're running their dogs through fields or on the beach, wherever it happens to be, and your dog takes off and it goes after somebody else's toy. We wouldn't say that the dog's jealous. Yeah. because that dog has got a toy and they just want the toy or I see yeah. it as my toy, you're just basically activating that predatory yeah. sequence onto a little Something's moving move ball fast, or whatever. Yeah. If it yeah, moves fast, it's fair take game. Take it, take yeah. it, and that's what play is. Have you got any tips for humans being jealous 
Yes, yeah, go to therapy, sort your head out, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Take life be... in its stride. <laughs> well, uh, it's that would be the downs. pot calling the kettle black Wouldn't for me it? because that's something that I do. You yeah. know, I do have a bit of a, 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 a sort of like lifelong battle with my own jealousy. Yeah, yeah. I don't that. have it. I don't so, have any of that, me. I have like um, like aspirations, and I wouldn't say it sparks a jealousy. I never go, God, I hate that they've got that or they can do that. It makes me go. I can, I can, I can achieve that. I can, I, I don't, yeah. But it's when cool. I was younger, when I was younger in my late teens, I had a lot of that. I, I, why has he got that and I haven't? Why can they do this? And I, I think it's something you, you, you grow out of, depending on yeah. your life experiences. Yeah, but then you've used it as fuel to go and. Do yeah, it and, and, and I think, I think it's a very positive way to be. To be honest, you know, you, you know, being, being bitter and jealous over what someone else has doesn't better your situation. No. Yeah. Look um, at them as inspiration absolutely. to aspire to something greater. But our mind does. I'm not talking about anything that's in materialistic yeah. possessions or anything yeah, like that yeah. or somebody's personal, yeah. you know, achievements. I'm talking about the. Yeah, that yeah. comes out with yeah. it when some bloke. Oh, yeah, I don't even. Uh, I don't even have that. I don't, my... e I don't even have that. Charlotte goes mad. I think she'd love me to be a little bit jealous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes we we confuse protective with, je with jealousy, don't we? As well. Yeah, I'm resource guarding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. DM me. Your Honor, I gave them all the signals and they ignored them. I killed <laughs> the not my fault. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I tried the space train <laughs> behaviour. Yeah, but no. No one would dance. But then I was just it. consumed by drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pregnancy sequence. Yeah. What, can you, what can you say? Oh, yeah. my God. I have so many questions right now, but let's go to the listeners' right, questions. Okay, what let's see what got? we've got. Okay, my sister's dog freaked out when they brought their baby home from the hospital. Uh, the dog didn't want to be around the baby. Oh, there's lots of good things going on here. The dog yeah, didn't yeah. want to be around the baby, and she threw up all night. What, the baby or the dog? Don't know. She still <laughs> refuses to acknowledge the baby's existence. Is this normal? Dogs can sometimes struggle with changes of environment and we we don't really make that any easier for them. We just expect them to just go with the flow and sometimes concerted efforts have to be made. Um, unfortunately, you know, you can work definitely work through that, but there should have been a little bit of time made in preparation for that. Yeah. Um, again, you know, a structured routine helps. You know, if you've got something new in the house, but your dog's routine doesn't change, if if... If four weeks prior to that baby or, or a bit longer, your dog was of an evening in a place command on his bed while you're watching telly, or when the baby comes home, nothing changes, everything's the same. But if your dog's had free roam and guarantee there's a new baby there, so now you're neither one of two people, keep away from the baby, don't go near the baby, or you're like, come on, let him have a sniff, let him say hello, all this kind of stuff, you're, you're massively impacting that dog's environment and, it, and the change of environment can cause serious stress to dogs. Is it normal for a dog to freak out no, just because normal. the baby's come into the house. No, it's not. No, it's not normal. It's 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 always in the realm of possible, but I wouldn't say it's normal. Something something's not right there. Right. And you know, unfortunately, you know, there's, there is problems with with dogs in rescues and rehome. But your you, your child will always come first. Yeah. You have to mm. seek serious professional advice. Make sure that you you're going to a reputable trainer, and. If they assess that situation and advise that they wouldn't have that dog in that house with that child, you're going to have to really start letting logic overrule your emotional attachment yeah. to the yeah. dog. It kills us as dog trainers because we love dog. I love dogs more than people, but we live in a society where children and people come first. Okay, question two: How do dogs know to anticipate when their owners come home from the at the end of the day? I heard before that dogs will generally know when their owners will return because the scent dissipates throughout the day. I've no idea if that's true, but it seems that at certain times a dog will wait at the door. Oh, Very interesting. What we can tell you is, from a, a trainer's perspective, um a lot of gun dog trainers are, are, are really all over this, but dogs have a very, very good understanding of space and time. Mm -hmm. So they, they they know when you're coming back, whether that's through scent dissipation. I don't know. What would you say, Jamie? I'd like to know a little I'd bit be more a bit, what's I think being that, I think, to be honest, what a question. I think that might be grounds for a, a whole episode oh at God, some point. Really could, I mean, it could be something like the circadian rhythms. You know, like you yeah, feel yeah, hungry yeah. at a certain point of time yeah. every day we'll, because we'll, you get used you know, to that. From a, per, as, a, yeah. as a professional dog trainer, what I can tell you is dogs are super, super aware of space and time. And when I mean that, if you train and recall with your dog and you always recall them from... 50 yards, when you come to find that lead off, your, your dog will start stopping at 50 yards yeah. and checking in on you. If you have the same sort of routine, your dog is very aware of when you're coming home. It's 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 not it's not your opinion. It's not, you know, you're on your own in your observation. That is 100% true. Mm -hmm. It is something I confirm, but 
we haven't quite got the uh, the science on no, that. So again, I think that might be a really good topic of discussion at some point. Question: We should give them a bonus for yeah, brilliant. yeah. Awesome. I think just just as a sort of like a you know, yeah. a, a, when a person is returning, there is also the sound the particular engine sounds yeah, of, yeah. Of, of the person's car yeah. they might be coming back with. Or you could get, so I get this, I get this, Lou, my wife will say, um, they knew you were coming back. They knew you were coming back. They've been at the window for the last such and such. Yeah. The last it, eight hours you've been the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that that my dogs knew they were, that I was coming back? Or is it that she is more uh, aware of a time frame of when I'm coming back yeah. and her behaviour is indicative yeah, of what? Yeah, 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 yeah. It could be all the yeah. cues. It could be all the yeah. cues. It could be yeah. the light changing outside. Yeah, it could, yeah, it could even be what's going on in the house. You know, you, you, you know, the, your wife or your husband might start might start tea an hour before you're home, and yeah. you know that yeah. kickstarts the oh, association. It could I just be a, look at the literature. It could be a million things, but I, I would be very curious on knowing the literature yeah. on that because yeah, I would as I, well. my my understanding of dogs, you know, everything Jamie said there, one hundred percent. You know, there could be a lot. Of associative learning going on there, but my understanding is, and I don't know if you'd agree, but dogs are very aware of space and time. Yeah, I agree. I agree, yeah. and I think anybody who's watching and listening would say the same sort of thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm no doubt there are hundreds of thousands of people that would say, yeah. "You know exactly where I'm coming when I'm coming maybe home." Maybe well, even knows exactly millions. When you're coming home. Yeah. Maybe even yeah. millions. Maybe, but maybe great question, millions. and we love great questions on the Dog Scholar. So if you have any more great questions, how can people get in touch, Jay? Well, at Dog Scholar Podcast, if you want to get in touch with us on social media, okay, that's where you'll find us, or you can email us at podcast at thedogscholar.com. Why do you always look like you're going to giggle when you do that? Because I am always going to giggle when I do that. Because I said that. Come. I love it. Right, X. Give me some X. Dog X. Give, give me some dog X. Right, first, this is a different one. I thought I'd start with my ick. This is a personal experience I've had, and I've had it a few times, and it drives me insane. So this is Danny Wells from Speak mm. Liverpool. <laughs> okay. Um, when you're walking into a dog-related environment, that may be a pet shop or your vets, you walk with your dogs perfectly under manners, and someone walks past you with the dog dragging them from pillar to post, looks at the dog and goes, why can't you behave like that? And the instant thought is, because I've spent f f countless hours training my dog and you have done <laughs> none, none at all. That's my... But it's just the way they assume the dog will yeah, know yeah, what it's saying. Yeah, honest to God, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And you know, I'm past it now, I've been in the industry a long time, but... Once upon a time, I'd be like, "Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? You do, you think, do you think these just come out the come out the womb and we're like, yeah, we'll follow him? You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> like Mother um, Duck. Yeah, it's so frustrating, but it, it's to be fair though, they're, I mean, you should take it as a compliment because they're not oh, really it saying it compliment. to the dog; they're saying it to you, yeah. aren't they? So it is definitely, definitely a compliment. A compliment. I, I get it now. Like, you probably get it yourself, Jamie. You get sick of answering questions because people don't don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear that you know, if you just give them a biscuit, they'll they'll do it straight mm. away. They don't want to hear that you've put hours and hours of time into that. <laughs> so I walk in a vets and go down, and I will walk over, book my dog in, and they look and they go. How do you get your dogs to do that? And I'll go, it's do you know what? Every time I buy them, they just, they're just like that. <laughs> it's, like, oh, it's, yeah. it's imprinting. That yeah. was the first thing he saw when yeah. he hatched. Yeah, yeah. 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 He follows me everywhere, man. It's absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Danny was yeah. waiting at the birth and as soon as they popped over, down. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't you be like that? Because I'm a rebel. Yeah. 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 I'm jealous of everything, mate. Yeah. 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 I don't conform to your normal ways. Yeah. Yeah. Right. OK. Yeah, now we've got Do Anarchy. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Oh, God. Come now on. we've got Dot from Manchester, and she... And this is a good one. <laughs> is she from it, Manchester? Yeah, she's from Manchester. Okay. OK, she goes... She just simply says, it's a COVID dog. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Mm. Yeah, Jamie, do you want to take that like Somebody what? just what? pulled right, a power Leah, cord let's, out. Uh, before we hand over to Jamie, I'll just uh, say, it's a dog. I'll, I'll tell you what, the, the whole sort of, like, COVID answer yeah. get out of jail card cover all everything yeah. you know it's because of covid it's because it's of just, covid it's an come excuse. on that's like every yeah. dog was perfectly behaved yeah. every dog yeah, you know yeah, yeah. there were no yeah, dog yeah. issues yeah. prior to covid things weren't rising in terms of problematic things I mean, with dogs i'll go out to the limb i'll go out to the limb and say i love it if you got a dog in a period of time when you couldn't take it anywhere and overexpose it and not know what you're doing we as dog trainers have got a lovely blank canvas to work yeah, with. Yeah. The worst but case, the worst case scenario that. is we've got to do a little bit of socialization and exposure work. But other than that, you've pretty much got a blank canvas. It's not, it hasn't practiced a lot of unwanted behavior nine times out of 10. And, and arguably the during, during lockdowns in particular, when we couldn't do a lot, you're spending a huge amount of time with your dog. That's a great opportunity to build a bond. That's a great opportunity to do training. So you're right, although the socialization might be different, there's a lot that 
will give you some really good, or oh, you should have had the yeah. opportunity to build some really good foundation work. But to be fair to people, and I know that we're joking about it a bit, but to be fair to people, it was a really difficult, disruptive time. So, no, I get it. You know, maybe people's minds ne weren't necessarily mm. in that space, but if your dog is, uh, you know, isn't well trained, if you're having challenges with your dog, that's all right, that's normal, that happens. But find a really good dog trainer. I had young dogs. You yeah. know, I had young dogs throughout throughout that period. I haven't ended up with fractious wrecks that I can't take yeah. anywhere. I think there's too much emphasis placed on socialization and not enough understanding of the concept of exposure, yeah. of actually letting dogs, you know, yeah. experience things. And I think there's plenty that could be done within the home environment there. I think there's a lot of things where um, uh, large organizations and institutions and even government, you know, will, will place it on COVID as being a reason for Something Everything. which perhaps is, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's multiple aspects yeah. for, for what comes into that. But when it comes down to, oh, I was at home all the time and the dog was at home all the time. So, you know, now what happens when I go back to work? I'm not excusing this sort of like jettison the dog that I had because now I don't need it because I'm back in work and I haven't got the time. I don't doubt the fact that re uh, rescue centers were overflowing yeah. with a surplus of dogs. There was a surplus of dogs that were bought. The price of dogs went through the roof, et cetera, et cetera. But what better time to teach a dog to be alone? That ability to cope, yeah. self-soothe right. and cope. Self That's the only thing that. really that COVID affected. If everyone was at home with, the, with their young dogs all the time, the dogs become accustomed to being in human company all the time. So, you know, all your dogs dragging you from pillar to post and kicking off at everything and, you know, not coming back to you off the leads. That's nonsense. The only thing really that COVID was, gonna, was not gonna help was Separation anxiety in dogs. Funny. Should we do one more dog ick or are we calling it a day? I think that's all we've got time okay. for this week. Okay. I'm so sorry, but if you enjoyed this episode, please do share it with a friend. Because if they don't like it, they're going to. See you next week. <laughs>